Using open data, the BBC, together with the publication Media Zona and a team of volunteers, identified the names of 68,011 Russian soldiers killed during the invasion of Ukraine. More than half of them were not connected with the army when the war began. For the first time, the category of volunteer servicemen came out on top in terms of the total number of losses, those who decided to sign a contract with the Ministry of Defense or the Russian National Guard after the start of the full-scale war in Ukraine. It is confirmed the death of 13,152 volunteers, which is 20% of the total number of confirmed losses on the Russian side. For the first time since the beginning of the war, the losses of volunteers exceeded the losses of other categories of war participants, including prisoners and mobilized soldiers. An estimated 610,000 Russian soldiers have been killed or wounded since the war in Ukraine began, the UK Ministry of Defense said in an intelligence update. The staggering casualty figure, the latest Western estimate of Moscow's significant losses in Ukraine, highlights Russia's ability to sustain huge losses as the grueling conflict shows no sign of slowing. Last month alone, Russia saw an average of 1,187 casualties per day. The UK Ministry of Defense said in an update, citing reports from Ukrainian troops that Business Insider could not independently verify. The figure is slightly higher than Moscow's average daily casualties in July, which were 1,140 troops. Britain said the increase in Russian casualties was almost certainly linked to Ukraine's ongoing invasion of Russia, which has been going on for about a month, and Russia's continued advance towards the eastern Ukrainian town of Pokrovsk. Ukraine has said one of the aims of its invasion of Russia's Kursk region was to divert Moscow's forces from the Pokrovsk sector. However, Kyiv has acknowledged that the attempt to ease pressure on this critical section of the front line has failed. Russia continues to rely on mass to mitigate shortages of personnel and equipment, the UK Ministry of Defense said in a statement. While Russian pressure across the front line will continue over the next month, their limited capabilities are likely to continue to reduce their ability to exploit any tactical gains to achieve wider operational benefits. The Defense Ministry added that Russia's casualties were likely to continue to exceed 1,000 a day for the rest of September as its troops fought along a sprawling front line. Moscow has suffered consistently high casualties since early summer. In addition to personnel, Russia has lost a huge amount of military equipment since the war began. This includes nearly 10,000 armored vehicles, hundreds of aircraft and helicopters, and dozens of naval vessels, according to the open-source intelligence site Oryx, which tracks military losses on both sides. Military analysts say that despite these losses and the high level of wear and tear on equipment, Russia could still wage war in Ukraine for years. President of Russia Vladimir Putin said that Russia is ready to return to negotiations with Ukraine based on the agreements reached in Istanbul in 2022. Are we ready to negotiate with them? We have never refused this, but not on the basis of some ephemeral demands, but on the basis of the documents that were agreed upon and actually initialed in Istanbul, Putin said at the Eastern Economic Forum. Putin's statement may indicate a change in his position on peace talks. At the beginning of the summer, the head of the Russian regime called the retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces beyond the borders of the annexed regions of Ukraine a precondition for the start of negotiations. After the invasion of the Kursk region, he spoke of the impossibility of such negotiations. And during the lesson, conversations about the important, which Putin held in Kizil, he allowed for the possibility of peace talks with Ukraine in the event of the retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces from the territory of the Kursk region. Thus, in just the last few weeks, Putin has already changed his position on the negotiations several times, continuing to reduce his demands on Ukraine. In June, the New York Times published the text of a draft peace agreement developed in the spring of 2022 by delegations from Ukraine and Russia. According to commentators, the terms proposed to Ukraine were unacceptable. The Istanbul Agreement implied a neutral status for Ukraine, but allowed the country to join the EU. The parties also agreed in the document that Ukraine accepts Russia's occupation of Crimea, but does not recognize Russian sovereignty over it. 
It was assumed that the status of Crimea would be determined within 10 to 15 years after the agreement and Volodymyr Zelensky and Putin were to agree on the status of other territories occupied by the Russian army at a personal meeting. The agreement also introduced restrictions on the size of the Ukrainian army and the number of various weapons. In the spring of 2022, the halt in negotiations, according to the newspaper, was influenced by Russia's attempt to gain veto power over military aid to Ukraine from its allies in the event of a new attack. Last November, the leader of the Ukrainian negotiating team, David Arakamia, cited several reasons why Ukraine refused to sign the treaty. One of them was that Kiev considered the document a ploy that would allow Moscow to rebuild its army and return to fight in Ukraine.